heading out into Mogami, driving down the access road to Mullins Landing. Switched to dirt from pavement about 10 minutes ago, and uh, pretty soon I'll be putting in. To Mogami, Ontario. I'm at Mowitz Landing and just getting ready to launch. Canoes loaded and just a blue barrel and an orange bag and a pelican case this trip. So trying to keep it light for two carries. Short paddle to the first and only portage of the day, 300 odd meters. And then we're into Lady Evelyn. All right, here we go. Just approaching the portage ahead in about 500 meters. Bit of a stiff headwind. Makes me a little nervous for what's on the other side of the portage because it's a very long corridor at the top of Lady Evelyn. And I believe the wind will be funneling right down it. So let's see what that looks like. All right, Mullet Landing Portage, first one. Always kind of sloppy. Stuff bungee to everything else. Mason carries his own life jacket. Balls over there. And all the other junk. All right, two carries, let's do it. Okay, just finished that short portage and now we're down at the water. Mason's taking a dip. Got the canoe set out as I like it, set up as I like it. Blue barrel squeezes in the front, pack behind and this space here for Mason and I. And uh, hopefully we won't be out of the water as much as we were before. Okay, we're on Lady Evelyn now and it's time to get paddling. Okay, and we are heading out. We are heading out onto a blustery Lady Evelyn. Still heading into Lady Evelyn proper through, I guess, that north channel. The wind's died down quite a bit. It's still gusty, but very paddleable, like just a ripple on the water. So hopefully we'll make some good time across Lady Evelyn before the wind comes up or I get too tired. But uh, moving along very nicely right now. Okay, we are about to enter Lady Evelyn Lake proper. And I do not see a lot of waves. Doesn't mean it's not windy. It means there are not a lot of waves, which is great. Um, this is a big lake, probably 15 kilometers across. I'm hoping to make it part way. We're all the way today. Let's see how she goes. So heading pretty much due west right now. Lady Evelyn is a big lake. And I need to go all the way down to the end. As far as the eye can see. The paddling conditions are beautiful. And the cloud cover has taken some of the sting out of this incredible heat. So, there I go. Campsite number one in the Narrows. Whew, a windy paddle <clears throat> to get here. Just got to the campsite at the Narrows and good thing, just in time. This wind is really picking up. That's coming from the south. And where I just came, in the east, this weather over here is really, really getting nasty. And it was quite a cross breeze when I came up through here and the last kilometers took everything I had. But now we're at the site and looks like someone's done some clearing because there's a fair bit of wood here. More than I'll ever need or use. And I believe there's a tent pad back in the woods there. And uh, got easterly exposure here so we'll get the morning sun and hopefully the morning calm. What do you think of this campsite, Mason? Is it a good one? Yeah, is it a good one? We're gonna stay? We're gonna stay? Yeah, we'll stay. 
Okay, not a lot in the way of tent pads, but there's a thunder box. And there's a little spot for the tent down by the water, which will do. Today was hard earned, 20 something kilometers, 21 point something. And the second half of it was very windy. And the last 10% was incredibly windy. But at the campsite now, just in the Narrows, beautiful view. And I'll make an early take off tomorrow and try to avoid all the wind that's coming down that alley. Time is 3.47. I arrived here at 3.30. I left the put-in at 10.30. Hit the first portage at 10.50 and completed the portage at 11.20 and then paddled non-stop until here, which had me arriving at about 3.30. Anyway, I'm gonna sign off now and enjoy my libations. My warm libations. Ready? Okay, give. very fortunate to be sitting right across from an eagle's nest and you can't see it with the naked eye I've got the binoculars out and there's a yearling which hasn't yet got its white head but then beneath it could be the parent which is just a stunning bird with the whitest head massive body both in the same tree one up high one down low just amazing. I heard them. They made all kinds of noise. That's all I knew they were there. Tonight's dinner is dehydrated chili done on the alcohol stove with this uh, windscreen around it just to keep the heat where it needs to be. And I've got my dried veggie chili and I have separately my dried beef. Uh, I'll put the beef in to rehydrate first and add the veggie chili later because it doesn't take quite as long. This is three portions. I'm just going to eyeball it out and uh, get set, set up for dinner tonight. Mason has his food too, but whatever I don't eat, I like him to eat so I don't have to waste it. I can always pack his food back home. So after this is done, whatever I don't finish, I'll mix in with a smaller portion of his kibble. Don't know if you heard that. That's the eagle across the way. Oh, that's looking good. 
Oh yeah. Mm, maybe a little soupy, but you never know after 20 minutes the beans and everything can soak up a lot of water. Mm. Yes, sir. All right, let's unwrap this present and see exactly how it, oh my goodness. See how it turned out. I think it turned out okay. So now the last two steps, hunk of butter, bunch of cheese. I could argue that I didn't need to add the butter. Maybe I could just get by with the cheese, but it's just crazy talk. Oh my God. What doesn't butter make better? All right. And the cheese. Did you do it? Okay, so this is what we've got. Dun, da, da, da. And the money shot. Oh my God. Oh yeah. You can never go wrong with chili. All right, time to eat. And what chili meal would be complete without some garlic naan to go with it? So poor Mason's sitting right here, smelling all this food, looking at me, asking, when's, when's my food time? But I feed him my leftovers, and I'm not sure if there's going to be any. If there isn't, then he'll get dog food. If there is, he'll get this plus dog food. So I just don't like having food left over because there's nowhere to dispose of it. Do you like the chili? Wow, these bald eagles are something else. They are up so high from where I'm sitting, you can just, it looks like a golf ball in the trees. It's just, unless you knew where to look, you'd never find it. And the second bird, which is brown and seemingly bigger, maybe it's not a yearling, maybe it's Anyway, it's stacked on a branch above the bald eagle, the one with the white heart. And it's probably 20 feet above that in a white pine that just, I mean, it's just so tall. And they haven't moved in two hours. They're just sitting there facing the sun, one in a nest and one on a branch above. Huge birds. Time is 8.20, and it is so hot. It's been so hot today. I don't know if I have heat something or I'm just old and tired, but going to bed, it's 8.20. I can't keep my eyes open. But today was a great day, and I uh, just wanted to do a little recap. Um, Uh, a great day. Got really lucky with the weather. Got really lucky with the wind uh, to start with. Of course, at the end of the day, it was kind of a wind fest, but uh, found a decent campsite next to five canoes of teenage girls who you can probably hear in the background, but I'll lose them tomorrow early. And uh, saw two sets of bald eagles today. Saw a loon, one portage and uh, just got the canoe dialed in as I like it with Mason and all the other gear. And tomorrow, one more day of big lake paddling and then after that, we're into the waterfalls, which is uh, the whole purpose of this trip. So I'm gonna turn in soon, have an alarm set for five, but I'll probably wake up before then and get an early start before the wind comes up and uh, tackle the lake. And then camp at Frank's Falls tomorrow, that's the plan. Anyway, Mason's in a similar state of fatigue as I am, and uh, 
I think we're both going to turn in. So tomorrow, day two, get an early start. <laughs>